found, I'll be reading from Matthew, the second chapter, the first, from 1 to 12, the visit of the wise men. In the time of Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising, and has come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are no means least among the rulers of, of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering, in, entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left to their own country by another way. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Over the last few months, I read a lot. You can ask my wife, I read. I read. Matter of fact, I read more than some people. She says I have a library that can fill the church library. But I read, I read a book called The Christmas Train by David Baldacci. And if you, are re if you really know what this book is about, it's about romance. And here I am, I'm a guy of ESPN, sports, basketball, baseball. I fell in love with this book. It was a story about two lovers, two people who have been estranged for years and finally got together, and you guessed it, just before Christmas. Their romance intensified. Wait, excuse me. Yes, the, ro the romance intensified since the episodes occur on an Amtrak train traveling from Washington, D.C. to L.A. And as the caravan is on its move from one stop to another, passengers encountered various situations regarding the weather, relationships, and self-examination. Each finds himself or herself at times looking deep within their souls. <coughs> the Christmas train carries a hodgepodge of individuals representative of the American landscape. From the east, from the west, from the midwest, even the mountains, some rich and famous, some was not rich and not so famous, some are children, adults, male, female, African-American, white, and religious diversity. The train finally reached its destination on December 26th. When I finished the book, I imagined what happened after everybody got off and went on their way. People on the move from here to there. Some with a purpose, some with no purpose. And what about the train? Another destination, of course. Perhaps headed back to the east or the north or the south. Here was a caravan of sorts on the move. And people are always on the move, aren't they? Even when they don't go anywhere, they are on the move. It reminded me of Matthew's account of another caravan that I call the Christmas caravan. It too was on the move from one place to the next probably over a round trip course of about three or four years. Journey, journeying perhaps a thousand miles or so. But not on Christmas train, but it was Christmas camels. 
<clears throat> this caravan was on its way to Christmas, even though it had no idea it was Christmas. The passenger list was rather different than on the Christmas train, but these were mostly the same kind of people. And how do you describe them? Upper class, scientists, intelligent astronomers, astrologers, pagans, foreigners. Clearly they weren't from around there, or from around here, matter of fact. Of course their caravan has servants. People I had just described in that culture always have a lot of servants, which may speak to something else that, they, that these learned folk. Because of their known benevolence, there were probably middle, lower class people that traveled with them in their caravan who likewise desired to see the child who has been called the king of the Jews. Everybody had seen the star that displayed in the heavens, so maybe this Christmas caravan was on the move with all kinds of people. Like those described in David Balhachi's novel. Don't you just love the story of the Magi, the wise men? It is the most intriguing and gratifying. And I am glad we sung some of the songs and hymns that focus on the kings. Even though the text never said they were kings, in all likelihood, no connection to royalty at all. There may have been only three, but in likelihood, there are probably a dozen or more. As with gladness, men of old, we three kings in the first Noel, emphasized the fundamental story in this first advent of Jesus. Even if Jesus had already celebrated a birthday or two at the time of their arrival. When this caravan nearing its destination, they arrived some five miles north of Bethlehem, in Jerusalem and were greeted by a paranoid king, Herod, who was not the legitimate king, by the way. He was put in power by Rome, and he wasn't any descent of David the king. The news of the Magi brought to town scared old Herod to death, as well as the city's citizens. Most English translations are rather weak in describing Herod's reaction. The Greek word translated frightened in the NRSV conveys a sense of great agitation. Herod was greatly annoyed, and he was intolerably agitated. He figured that his rule was threatened, and nobody was going to get homage except him. Notice the hypocrisy. Herod was no practitioner of Judaism. If he were, he would have known where the Messiah would have been born. Why, all the devotees of the Hebrew religion knew where the anointed one of God would be born. He had to get the leading preachers, scholars, to tell him that it was in Bethlehem in Judea. Some journey he was on, don't you think? He heard the text what happened, and Herod sent them on their way, instructed them to tell him after they found the child that he could also pay homage. Yeah, right. They went to Bethlehem and worshiped the child and offered him gifts associated with royalty. They left it by a different route to go home, and their Christmas caravan was on the move again. Here at the outset of Jesus' story in Matthew's Gospel account, we get a glimpse of God's purpose for humanity. We see right off the bat that Jesus, the shining light prophesied by Isaiah, came to bring salvation to his people, obviously the Jews. But less obvious because of arrogance and prejudice, we find that he brings salvation to all people represented by these astrologers and their entourage from Iraq or maybe India. Back then, Jesus' own people missed the reality that his mission was to all. They shouldn't have it, though. Again, in Isaiah 60, I'm going to read Isaiah 60, verse 6. From Midian to Ephah and all from Sheba, they bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Sometimes we miss the train, so to speak. It is the train or caravan proclaiming the praise of the Lord. We forget the Christmas caravan is on the move continually proclaiming the praise of the Lord and that the gospel is for anybody and everybody. Not just our kind, mind you. This is why Jesus came into our midst. This is why he dwelled among humanity. He came to teach us that there is only one kind. 
that there is only one kind of people created in God's image and likeness. People are people. People bleed red. People have eyes. People have ears, noses, stomachs, gallbladders, fingers, toes. People have hearts and brains. People are always on the move. People are drawn to something beyond themselves, even beyond their own religion. The December 30th, 2004 edition of USA Today contained a picture of a man squatting on one of the beaches in Thailand that was devastated by the years before tsunami. Presumably a Buddhist, he was holding what seemed to be incense sticks as he prayed for the soul of his sister, who was swept out to sea as she sold goods to the tourists on the beach resort. Christmas is for people like that. That's why the caravan is to always be on the move in order to show someone, such as the Buddhist, a better way, which in fact is the only way. That, of course, is the way of Christ Jesus. All of us are drawn to something beyond ourselves, especially in times of great tragedy. Presently, our world has been drawn closer due to the devastating earthquakes and tsunamis around the world. Tragedy has a way of doing that, I wonder. Could it be that a tragedy had befallen the wise men and their company on their way on in their native land? If so, could it be that God provided a sign for them in, in the heavens that guided them to which was beyond themselves, where, they were, where there was hope? To a place more appropriately, a person who would do more for them than a routine stargazing with? Keep in mind that these folks were pagans, like the Buddhist man praying for his sister's soul on that beach. The wise men worshipped not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but by the grace of Abraham, by the grace of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they may have been exposed to to Hebrew religion, since Hebrew colonies have been established during the during the exile in Babylon some 570 years or more before. The Magi was good people. Some seemed ethical and moral. Yet they were astrologers. They delved in the horoscopes. They were new ages before the term came, became vogue. I think God used their pagan new ageism to bring light into their darkness. They arrived in Bethlehem pagans. They left believers in Christ Jesus. In gathering on this Lord's Day, we are to tell again that Christ has manifested himself to humanity and he wants all human beings to have a relationship with him. Each person has to choose though. It doesn't happen automatically. That's why the caravan is to be on the move with Jesus' story. And what a story it is. It's a story that exposes the most extraordinary means to manifest Jesus in and his desire. People like the Virgin Mary, who carried the baby, whose father was God himself. Things like a manger, things like once-in-a-lifetime phenomena, a superstar that appeared in the heavens to light the way with a light for those in darkness. An event like baptism, things like a towel and a wash basin, a loaf of bread, a cup of wine, a cross, and also, how about the empty grave? We are entering a new civic year, still celebrating Christmas. And we should, because Christmas is about casting light that has been risen in Jesus Christ. To the humanity that needs Jesus Christ. The church is called to keep the caravan on the move. The church is the caravan for that fact of the matter. Yet the church tends to be the first to cast Christmas aside all too quickly and not the secular world. Oh, it is a dangerous thing for the church to cast Christmas aside too quickly, especially in the light of fact that we don't even hear Merry Christmas often, even during the days before Christmas, but rather some bland Happy Holidays God knows we don't hear Merry Christmas. 
or in its original form, mighty Christmas, after Christmas Day. And I don't blame the Supreme Court or Congress for that. I blame the church, and I don't mean this building. I believe I blame me and you. The first Christmas caravan recognized the importance of Christmas. We can only speculate what that caravan did. How glad I am that God has graced us with imagination. I want you to think about this. As the Magi and their caravan moved on away from Bethlehem to parts really unknown to us, surely they said to the people they encountered along the way, Merry Christmas! In other words, that the caravan shared the good news of their exceedingly great joy by bearing witness to the manifestation that had incurred in their lives. Namely, that the light of the world had shined into their lives and made them different. And when they got home, they told the story to all. That caravan left Bethlehem, knowing God was with them. They had seen Jesus, who was Emmanuel. They took Jesus with them in their hearts. They were commissioned with their great commission, even they didn't realize it. Here at the beginning of Matthew's story is somewhat a clue of how it ends. And at this junction, it is to it is signed at Matthew 28, 19. Go ye and teach all nations. I think the Magi did just that, going along with others in their caravan, on the move. They and others met God. Now allow your imagination to continue. 35, 40, 50 years later, an apostle or two, perhaps Matthew or Thomas, show up in the lands of the Magi. They begin to evangelize. Can't you hear the conversation? I can hear some of those people saying, We've been telling that story about the child born king of the Jews, his birth, and the manger. Some of us, some among us, travel to worship him. Obviously, there's more to that. So please, tell us the rest of the story, especially the part of the cross and the empty tomb of which you have spoken. Tell us that part again. The light has shone. We pr I pray that we've seen it. I pray the Christmas caravan here at our church will always be on the move. Let us move with renewed passion for Jesus. Let us be faithful and obedient members of the caravan. Let us go throughout the world, especially in the light of the light that is shining in other parts of the world like Sri Lanka, Indonesia, India, the Philippines, throughout the United States where earthquakes and things do happen. Let us pray and love every nation on earth. Let us join our caravan with other caravans of Christ Christmas believers. And may the Christmas caravan never cease to be on the move with the story of the child, his birth, his way of life, his teaching, his death, his resurrection, and his coming again. The Christmas caravan is on the move. Amen.